Okay. So, hello everyone. I am Super Squonk, and this is The Incredibles for 6th Gen Platforms, specifically in my case, the Xbox. This game is of course based on the 2004 Pixar movie, one of their greatest for sure, and this game is definitely interesting. It's not for everyone, but it's a game which I'm very fond of. And the speedrun is quite interesting, so... I will be getting right into it, and I will try and explain as much as I can. <laughs> but there is definitely a lot to go through, so... I can only try my hardest. Anyway, I'm just gonna load into the game. And we're going into the first level of the game, Bank Heist. Now, Bank Heist is a pretty simple level. It's not a particularly hard level, you know, being the first level in the game and all. But there are skips in this level which I will be doing. Because, of course, that's what you do in a speedrun. And timing is about to start very soon. Okay, so timing starts now. So the first thing you're going to notice is I'm going to roll and jump a lot. Mainly because this is the fastest form of movement Mr. Incredible has most of the time. His absolute fastest form of movement is using his Incredible Dash, but he doesn't always have access to that. So what I did right there was I actually skipped a cutscene. There's normally a little cutscene that plays there, but you can just very easily jump over the trigger. It saves about 10 seconds or so. The weird thing is that it doesn't work in every version of the game. It only works in some versions. But I'm playing a version it does work on, the Xbox version. Now, for any percent, Xbox is the overall fastest version of the game. It has relatively fast loads. And it has a weird thing going on with the frame rate, where the game speeds up a whole bunch. It only happens on Xbox, and it saves a lot of time. And it overall gives Xbox the edge in this category. PC is very close, losing less than a minute. But... Yeah, Xbox overall takes the cake for any percent, as long as you're using a hard drive. But even if you're not, it's extremely close between Xbox and PC. So, what I did with there was I did a technique known as a slope climb. Basically, you can high jump and do a slam, and while you're falling, you can actually input another high jump, and you can use that to climb higher. And you can do, and that can be used to do a whole bunch of skips. So what I did earlier with that slope climb was that I actually skipped the whole bank section of the level, which saves us about a minute. You normally have to go through quite a long bank, but you can pretty much skip all of it with a slope climb. So that cuts down the level quite a considerable amount. It's definitely it's slope climbing is definitely an annoying technique. <laughs> Even though I've done it many, many times, I just cannot get it perfectly all the time. It's something that can definitely go wrong if I'm not careful. And it's the, one of the most vital techniques for running this game. And you'll be seeing it quite a few more times in these Mr. Incredible levels. And that's pretty much the end of the first level. Bank Heist. We had some small skips, we had a big skip. And now we're moving on to our first Elastigirl level, Skyline Stretch. Skyline Stretch is quite an interesting level, because it's a level with a ton of little skips, and one really big skip near the end. Mrs. Incredible plays very differently from Mr. Incredible, and she has her own techniques, and we'll get into that in this level, because we will be seeing them. So right there I jumped over a cutscene trigger, which is pretty basic. Ooh, I got something called a single snipe. So normally you have to punch down these two guys, but if they are in just the right position, you can hit at least one of them into one of those flying guys, and it saves a little bit of time. If you are extremely lucky, you can hit both of them, which saves about five seconds, but that has literally never happened to me, and it's only ever happened to, like, one person. So yeah, it's extraordinarily rare. I'm going to do another little skip here. So here I'm doing an air roll. So if I roll off a ledge with Mrs. Incredible, I can actually stay in the air for a bunch of time. And what I did there was I skipped a cutscene, which saves a bunch of time. And then I threw an enemy into the 
you know, that wall, which was another cutscene skip, saving even more time. So yeah, there's a lot going on in this level. Then we have this section, where you have to kill these enemies. I'm doing it in a specific way to take them out as quickly as I can. I don't even know what happened there. Like, I got loads of incredit meter for, like, no reason. I have never seen that before. That is just absolutely insane. But now that I've done that, we are going to see a big skip. So normally we have this third section. It's pretty long. But we can skip most of it by doing a technique known as a wall scale. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick into a wall and that will let me jump off it. I messed it up there. But you can basically jump when you kick into some walls and you can use that to scale some walls. And I'm going to do that to skip all the way to the end of the level. Okay, the enemy hit me, which is annoying. But you know it can happen. So yeah, I grapple onto that. I do a wall I do some wall scales. I grapple onto that light and that takes me to the end of the level. That skips a whole big chunk of the level, which saves close to a minute. It's kind of, there we have there is a safer way to do that skip, which is slower. But you know, I had to do You know, we take those. Even if we mess up, we can always try again. So here we have Buddy Pine and Bon Voyage. This is one of the less interesting levels in the game. It starts off with this auto scroller section. It's a minute long. There's not really much you can do. You can swing around with Mr. Incredible. Yeah, unfortunately this is probably the least interesting level in the run, unfortunately. After this auto scroller, we're gonna have a boss. And while there are a few things we can do in the boss, it's overall a pretty long boss, which overall takes a bunch of waiting. Like, optimally is around three and a half minutes, but typically it takes closer to four. Like, there are some little things we can do to speed up the boss, but I'm not going to be doing all of them. So, coming up is one of my favorite cutscenes in the game. Also, a fun little fact, we see Buddy Pine in this level, of course, <laughs> sorry to spoil the movie, but he becomes the main villain, Syndrome, and the weird thing is that we never see Syndrome in the rest of the game. <laughs> we see him in pre-rendered cutscenes, as in cutscenes from the movie, but we never see him in the actual game after this. It's definitely strange, to say the least, considering he's the big bad guy of the movie, but... <laughs> Hey, it is what it is, I guess. So right there, I did a quick hit. Normally, you have to throw the bombs back at Bomb Voyage. But you can jump straight into them to get... You can get hit by the bombs, you can just jump into them. And it saves a few seconds. You hit Bomb Voyage a little bit quicker. You can do that on every hit, but it is incredibly risky. So I'm not going to be going for it in this marathon run. Like, I can do it again here, but I'm not going to. It's far too risky. It saves about three or four seconds, and if you miss it, it can literally lose you minutes, depending on when you lose it. <laughs> or depending on when you mess it up. And what I'm trying to do as well is I'm trying to manipulate where Bon Voyage moves after each cycle, because I ideally want him to go to a 90-degree angle of where I am, but sometimes he doesn't do that. You can somewhat manipulate it with your movement, but it's not 100% consistent. I guess one more interesting thing I can say about this level is that there is a technically a way it could be skipped. There is actually a debug trigger in this level, which is well out of reach. And if you somehow manage to hit it, you could just skip the whole boss. But... It is just way too far out of reach. It's extremely high and extremely far away. There's absolutely zero way we can get to it, pretty much. Especially with the knowledge of the game we have now. It's just way too far away. We 
We can actually hit it in a, in the debug percent run. We have a because this game has a no clip mode you can activate with hacks, and we do have a run for that. It's really fast. the whole, The whole run's only 14 minutes. So we do actually hit that debug trigger in that run, but it's just not feasible to hit in a real run. It's just way too far away. So all I can really do now is just hope Bomb Voyage goes in the direct direction I want him to go and I just need to hope that I don't stupidly die because if I die I have to do this whole fight again <laughs> and I don't think any of us want to see that. Yeah, all I can really do here is wait. So Bon Voyage is going to move again. He moved in a favorable spot. And I'm just going to mess around until the fight ends. Because that's all you can really do. He takes his time for that last hit sometimes, which is annoying. I still need to figure out how to avoid that. I think it only happens in this position as well. So, that is something I should try and look into at some point. I think it has to do with how close you are to him. It's really weird. So we're coming up to the final hit. Normally I'd do a quick hit on this final hit, which saves three seconds but loses four minutes if you miss it, so I'm not going to be doing that this run, I'm just going to hit him, and we're going to be greeted with more cutscenes, but luckily the next level, Apartment Inferno, while it does have unskippable cutscenes, it is a very short level, and it does have a neat little skip I'll get into, so this is very quickly... <laughs> catches you up with the 15 year time gap from the movie. It's very condensed in this game, but it's there. Going all along. And we're going to jump forward 15 years to Apartment Inferno. The burning bowling alley from the movie. Well, okay, it's not a bowling alley. <laughs> that was just the cover-up story Mr. Incredible and Frozo made up, of course. So yeah, this level is actually pretty short and has a pretty big skip, which we are going to be seeing in this run. But for now, we have to just play through the level and get there. What's funny is that because the Xbox version of the game has speed ups, the cutscenes just don't play. These cutscenes just don't play properly. Frozone's dialogue is often messed up and gets skipped because the cutscenes are so quick on Xbox. It's really funny. Okay, that one was normal this time, but it's not always normal. So here's the big skip. Normally we have to go through the level, but if I jump on this thing, and then jump, then I can jump up here. I missed it. I should not have missed that. You can jump up here, and now you're at the end of the level. That skips pretty much the entire level. Saves over a minute. And now we can move on to the next level, our first Dash level. So Dash is late for school, and he has to get to school before it starts. But luckily for us, Dash runs very fast, so that's not going to be a problem. So this level, if you played this game casually, you might remember this level being a bit of a pain. But in a speedrun, it's not too bad. Because everything in this level is consistent. All the cars, all the cycles, it's all consistent. So if you know the route to take, know where to go, you can get through this very cleanly. And I've done this level many times, so hopefully there won't be any errors. I just need to know when to boost, where to turn, and all that stuff.
So there's not much to say about this level. It's an auto-scroller, basically. Although you do have control over how quickly you do it. You do have some freedom in these auto in this level. So it doesn't really feel like an auto-scroller, even though it kind of is. So yeah, I don't really have a lot to say about this level. I just boost at certain times, I turn at certain times. I just know where everything is and I just know what I'm doing. As long as I execute everything just fine, there will be no problems. But the very least compared to Buddy Pine and Bomb Voyage, this level is more fun. It is an enjoyable level in my opinion. Like, it might be difficult to learn for a newcomer, but since I've done this so many times, I can basically do it perfectly nearly every time. Just knowing exactly where to go, when to dash. It's all nice and clean. So we're coming up to the end of the level. Again, I have a basic route to make sure I do this every time. And we will be getting to school... At 7.57.25, hopefully, or maybe 7.57.26, it'll depend, but normally I get there at 7.57.25. Yep, 7.57.25. The fastest I've ever finished this level is with a 7.57.24, so one second faster than I do in this run, but you do have to take riskier strats. And the Taz does it one second faster than that, so 7.57.23. But anyway, we are on to Beach Landing. This is another Mr. Incredible level, and other than this cutscene and one and a couple more coming up, we are mostly going to have control in this level. And this level does have some pretty big skips. So we start off with this. We just move through here. I'm going to hit a couple of enemies just so they can't mess me up. See, I hit that turret and that thingy so they can't hit me. And I get over here. And upcoming is a big skip. A pretty big skip. But not only a big skip, but a rarity in this game. An easy skip. So normally we have this big section we have to go around. We have to go around a lot of stuff. But we can skip... A good chunk of the level by just jumping on this tree. Then we can jump up here. And we've skipped about half the level. That's like a good minute of time save. And it's so easy as well. Most of the stuff in this game is hard. This game is brutal. This is not an easy speed game. Even as a casual game, this game is brutal. And the speed run, it ain't much easier. But that specific skip is easy. But we're coming up to an actual difficult skip now. So normally you have to knock down this satellite dish. And then you have to go... Oh! I, I missed that. I can't believe I missed that. <laughs> that is not a hard jump. Or at least it's not a jump I should be missing. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. But I literally missed that. I literally missed this skip in my PB as well. My current PB and the world record for this game is just under 58 minutes. And the second place run is an hour 5 minutes. So there's quite a considerable gap in that regard. So yeah, that's what I was supposed to do. And then I'm going to do a slow climb to get on top of here. Or at least I'm going to try to. Doing this strat in a marathon was probably not the best idea, but I got it earlier in practice, so I wanted to go for it. So yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. And then you go to the end of the level. Normally you go through a cave, and then you have to destroy some turrets. But by doing that skip, we skip all of that. There are different skips you can do to skip the, the enemy section, where you do go through the cave but then you jump around onto the final platform. They save a lot of time as well compared to the casual route, and they are definitely easier. 
but they are overall like 20 seconds slower than the skip I did. So now we have No Manison Island. <laughs> And this level is brutal. This is one of the hardest levels in the run. And that's saying something, because there are a lot of hard levels in this run. Kind of mess up the movement there. So what I'm doing here is that I'm collecting some meter. And you will hopefully see why I'm doing that in a bit. So I'm going to deactivate this laser field. And normally you have to lift that door up. But I'm going to skip that with a slope climb. First I'm going to destroy this turret. Okay, the slope climb is not going well. It's going horribly, in fact. In fact, I have to destroy this thing. Yeah, that slope climb normally does not go that badly for me. Normally I can get it first try or like third try at the, in, the, in the worst case scenario. But not today, I guess. Okay, this is why I saved up the meter. If you have enough meter and you're quick enough, you can literally just go through that door. It saves a good chunk of time. It's annoying, but it saves a good chunk of time. And getting it feels good. Missing it, however, loses a lot of time and it does not feel good. So now we are in this second section, which is typically fairly long, but you can pretty much skip all of it. First, I'm going to do some slope climbs to get up here. My slope climbs have not been good this marathon. And then I'm going to do another one, which I missed, but I can try it again. It's fine. I missed it again. Today is not a slow climbing day. Today is not a slow climbing day. Okay, I made up that time. And I'm and normally there's a turret section you have to do. I could do that as an easier skip, but I'm going to do the, the full metal skip and just jump over here. That skips the turret section. That's a really big skip overall. Both those parts combined save well over a minute. But it's definitely one of the hardest strats on the run to do well. Like, I miss it quite a bit. Especially when I'm rusty at the game. So here's the Omnidroid. If you played this game as a kid, you would know. You, you, pro you probably have PTSD from these Omnidroids. But as you can see, I've just climbed on top of the Omnidroid. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to try and stay on the Omnidroid for the whole fight. So basically how this works is that the Omnidroid's eye takes double the damage as its legs, so you want to hit it in the eyes. But the notable thing is that the Omnidroid can jump away. And sometimes it jumps away to the platforms. Way out. Oh, I fell off. That's not a big deal. That's not a big deal. It's that, this is salvageable. Ah, oh, it went on the platform. That's what I was trying to avoid. The thing is, when, it's, when the Omnidroid is on these platforms, it's so annoying. Because hitting it is way harder than it has any right to be. It just doesn't work a lot of the time. Miraculously, it actually worked that time. But annoyingly, I got hit because my TV blanked out on me. <laughs> Quite literally. And now it's doing this rolling cycle. And all I can really do is wait. <laughs> Ideally, I would get on top of the Omnidroid's head and I'd stay on there the whole time. And then it can't jump away. Because the thing about the Omnidroid is that when you hit it in the legs... As in, the legs have invincibility when the Omnidroid jumps. But, the eye doesn't. So if you hit it in the eye when it wants to jump, that cancels the jump. Doing, these, doing this Omnidroid fast in a run is hard. Like, it is hard. And I mess it up quite frequently. But it's over now. <laughs> it's actually over. Unfortunately, there's another Omnidroid, which is even worse than this one. <laughs> but we get there when we get there. <laughs> to quote Mr. Incredible. <laughs> so here we have Robot Arena, and this level has one of the craziest skips in the run. Which we will be seeing momentarily. So you're going to see me climb up this tree, and you're going to wonder, why am I climbing up this tree? <laughs> that looks slower than just going through the door. Well, there's a very good reason why I'm climbing up this tree instead of just doing this normally. 
Ow. Getting up this tree is definitely annoying. Especially if you miss it, because then the enemy starts shooting you. So yeah, I jumped over there. So the reason I did that, instead of the, you know, just walking through the door as normal, is because it unloads the next area. Why is that important? Well, if I don't mess up, it means I can skip a good portion of the level. So we have this little turret section. It's a, it's a platformer from, it's a 3D platformer from 2004. Of course it has turret sections. So you just do this turret section. But then after the turret section, that's where I will hopefully get the skip. So you're going to see already that the next area looks wrong. That's because I skipped the loading zone for the area. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and jump from the bottom of this level to the top. I do not normally get hit there. And I got it. So what that did is that basically skipped the entire portion between the first and second checkpoint. That saves about a minute. But if you die, you have to do the second checkpoint area. So you lose more time than you save. So that is definitely a big risk and reward strat. That, that's a very common in this game. There are a lot of skips where the risk is higher than their reward. So you'll have a skip... But, you know, it might save 10 seconds, but if you miss it, you lose 20. This game has quite a few skips like that, to varying degrees of extremity. That skip is quite a big skip. Saves a minute or so, but if you miss it, it loses more than a minute or so. So it's definitely very risky. So now I'm fighting this tank. This tank, it has a set pattern of attacks. There's not much you can do to speed it up. I'm doing the very few things I can do to make it faster. Like, I'm making it, I'm making it throw its bombs in these rocks because it's overall a little bit quicker. The bombs set up... The bombs turn green quicker so I can throw them back quicker. But there's not much to say about this fight. There are quite a few of these tanks in the game, and unfortunately you just cannot skip this one. It's just, it's just not possible. So we do have to fight it. Even in the debug percent category, we have to fight this tank. But after three hits, we finish the level. And there are more of those tanks in the game. Now here we have Omnidroid 2. And again, <laughs> if you played this game casually, you probably have PTSD from this fight. <laughs> And for good reason, because it's like Omnidroid 1, but harder. But, just like Omnidroid 1, there's an exploit to beating this boss. Except it's even harder than Omnidroid 1. I have to actually do a slow climb to get on top of this Omnidroid. And if I fall off, it's over. That is like, at least a minute time loss. But most likely, multiple minutes. So my goal is to just keep jumping and slamming on this Omnidroid until it, it's dead and I can't fall off which can definitely happen if I'm not careful or if the game does something wacky like there's a weird camera angle or something because the Omnidroid's hitbox actually changes when it wants to jump compared to if it does other attacks it's very annoying and you have to you know, know how to play around that I've practiced this boss a whole bunch so I can do it fairly well. But it can still go wrong sometimes. But it went pretty much perfectly, this run. So that's really nice to see. So I beat this boss in 75 seconds. At least according to the game. Although in reality it was a bit quicker than a minute 15. Because it's the Xbox version and it speeds up. But if you don't do that eye strat, this boss can take about five minutes or so in a worst case scenario. That boss is pain, it's RNG, and it's stupid. But with that strat, it's hopefully not those things if you get that strat perfectly. There used to be a different way to do that strat, 
in the olden days, which I could just not do consistently. Like, that boss was an automatic minute plus time loss for me every single run, at the very least. But now that I've adjusted the strat, I can actually realistically get the boss perfectly in a run. It doesn't happen every time, but at least it's feasible. So here we have Syndrome's base. We have to fight another one of these tanks, unfortunately. Again, there's not really much I can do to speed it up. I just have to fight the tank and just wait for it to do its thing. But after this, there is a pretty significant skip. So do hold on until then. See, all I can really do is just make the Omnidroid, or make this tank just move in a certain way. So I can hit it as quickly as possible and get in the best positions I can. So I'm going to try and make it throw the bomb close to the door so I can go in the door after I throw it. Just like that. And that's the tank done. And luckily, we're not going to see another one of these tanks until the end of the game. So yes, unfortunately there is another one, but we're not there yet. We don't have to worry just yet. So here I am going to do a big skip. Normally this level is pretty long. There's a lot of stuff you have to do. But if I do a slow climb here, I can make it all the way to the end of the level. It's just not cooperating with me today. This is not how it normally goes. So yeah, I can slow climb up here. And now I'm basically at the end of the level. So that saves a ridiculous amount of time. To be honest, I don't even know how much time this saves. Because I don't even know how long the casual route takes. Because <laughs> I don't think I've ever done the casual route properly, if I'm being honest. Like, even when I started running this game, this skip didn't exist, but there was a different skip, which was also pretty big. So yeah, I did that in, like, my first run. And that skipped a good chunk of the level. And then this skip was found, and this saved another huge chunk of time. So... Yeah. Well, Syndrome's an inventor. He has loads of money. He can invent things, he can sell things, and they are very valuable things. So Syndrome basically has all the money in the world he could want to make all these Omnidroids and tanks and all this stuff. He's a very rich man. And now here we have the next Mrs. Incredible <laughs> level. Finding Mr. Incredible. And this level is definitely interesting. This level is quite long, casually, but we have loads of skips in a speedrun, which cut it down tremendously. So a funny thing you can do in this level, you can look inside Mrs. Incredible, which I'm sure a lot of people would like, because Mrs. Incredible is typically seen as a thick woman, according to a lot of people. But here I'm going to go for a skip. So I'm going to line up my camera, and I'm going to try and hit one enemy into another enemy. I don't know if it's going to work. I hope it does. Oh, it worked. Nice. So normally that enemy at the back will activate a trigger and then I have to fight some enemies, hit some switches, yada yada yada. But if I throw that first enemy into him, that skips that completely. So it saves a decent amount of time. But you only have one shot at it. And if you miss it, well, you, you have to do the level normally pretty much. Well, that section normally. So there I did another skip. I used Mrs. Incredible's Incredi roll to get through that laser before it went up. So again, that saves a good chunk of time. And is and unlike the first skip, which is actually pretty tough and requires a spe fairly specific setup, it's that is easy. Like the second laser skip, where you just roll past the trigger, that is genuinely easy. And it saves like... Oh, I want the eye. And I'm going to do another laser wall skip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this guy. I'm going to hit this guy. And then I'm going to go past these shiny... These 
bright lights. And that skips another laser door. And that skips. And that again saves a bunch of time. Now here's probably the most brutal skip in the game. Not because it's hard, but because it's one of the most punishing. So there I can grab onto here and I can go on top of this crane, which you're not supposed to. You can't even do that in every version, but you can do it on Xbox and PC. And now I'm going to try and jump up here. This jump is very hard. I've done this jump like a thousand times and I can pretty much never get it first try. Ever. So I'm up now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump and I'm going to slam and hopefully I'm going to clip out of bounds, which I did. The scary thing about that is that you can mess up the clip and you can literally get stuck. And you have to reset the whole level. Which is very, very punishing. So here I'm going to do another skip. Normally you have to hit a lot of switches in this level. And I mean a lot of switches. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to jump on this crane. And I'm going to basically get to the top. Well, it's not a crane, it's like a grapple hook. But I'm going to jump up here, get up. And that skips that whole room. That is another big time save. The crane room skip, that's a big time save, at least a minute. That is at least two minutes faster than the casual route. No, like three minutes. I don't, the casual route takes forever, but that's so quick. But the weird thing about the laser room, which I didn't really talk about, is that when you do the out bounds, it actually loads the laser room incorrectly. It's supposed to have lasers and that big bridge is supposed to move around. But, because I skipped the trigger for it, because I did the, what's it called, the, the Out Bounds clip. The area doesn't load properly. So there are no lasers, and the bridge doesn't move. <laughs> Which actually makes the skip I did a lot easier, interestingly enough. Because normally you have to worry about a bridge moving and you have to worry about this car which can insta-kill you. But you don't have to worry about that if you do the clip. But that's the end of this level. I'm glad I did get the first laser skip so I can show that off in this run. But kind of shame the level didn't go better overall. Now earlier, as in like an hour ago maybe, I was practicing this game. I was practicing Finding Mr. Incredible. And I got a 3.23 in-game time in that level. Which is 7 seconds out of the current world record in that level. It was offline, so I didn't record it, which is a real shame. So yeah, I thought I'd point that out. So we have this dash level. This dash level is actually more interesting than the first one, because this one actually has a skip. It technically has two skips, but I'm only going to go for one of them. So we're starting off and it's pretty normal so far. Nothing to really say. But after the next checkpoint, that's when the skip comes into play. So I jump over this little bridge. And we're now at the checkpoint with a skip. So normally you have to run around this whole section. Wait, I forgot to dash. Silly me. But here's where the skip's going to come. So normally you'd have to run around this, blah, 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 blah. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to dash off a rock, and then I'm going to jump. And if I don't mess this up, I'm at the end of the section. So yeah, that saves about 20-ish seconds, but it is very hard. So yeah, that basically skipped me to the end of that section. So now I'm in the next area. The rest of this level is pretty straightforward. There's not a lot to say. It's just more dash shenanigans. Again, I know where to go and I know when to boost. You can't use boost as much in this level because there's a lot more obstacles you need to avoid. Yeah, this level is scary, but again... Since I practice so much, I can do most of it just fine. Although I will just occasionally just make a dumb mistake. Or I'll mess up the skip, which is genuinely quite hard. There is a funny glitch which can happen in the next area. Like sometimes you just run in the air instead of running on the water. 
but I think that only really happens if you die in this section. But it does look funny. So I'm just going to make it through this tunnel. Hopefully not going to die. So there's several deathless, which is nice. And now we're going to do Violet's Crossing. In a casual playthrough, this level is a pain. You have to wait a lot, you have to be careful of the guards, and if you're not careful, you can just die and have to do it all over again. As a casual, this level is kind of torturous, but in a run, it's not that bad. Like, again, this is like the dash levels. This level is completely consistent. It's completely cycle-based, no RNG. Well, there's a little bit of RNG, but not, the, not RNG that should matter if you play this level right. So I have a specific route where I can just go for the level without really stopping. This is the only Violet level in the game. So yeah, I pretty much know where to go, when to go invisible, when to let the enemies detect me. Here I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait a little bit just to be safe. You don't have to wait, but it is risky. And there's the Violet level done. Nice and swiftly. It's a pain as a casual, but in a speedrun we have a consistent route. We take the route, and it shouldn't be too bad. So now we have Incredible. This level is typically... It's not super long, but it's, de but it's definitely lengthy. But we can pretty much skip the whole level. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump up to a high portal level. I can just hit this wall. And if I do it just right, I'll skip a portion of the level. This is quite hard. It's not the most consistent thing in the world. We've got it fourth try. Luckily, you can afford to miss it at least once. And it doesn't really matter. So now what I'm going to do is... You see that path up there I'm going to run up onto it and now I'm on my way to the end of the level that skips at least half the level maybe even more than half the level I tried to jump over that gate but it didn't work so now I have to break this generator which is fine it's just it's just a time loss you have to take since going over that gate is inconsistent so by going on top of that path I skipped over half the level it saves Probably at least two minutes, but it definitely saves a lot. Now here we have Secret Lava Labs. This level is rather infamous among us speedrunners. <laughs> I said among us. Sorry for laughing at that. But this it, this level it has one of the stupidest skips in the run. And pretty much all of us speedrunners hate this level for that skip alone. And it is a skip which no matter how much you practice it, you will never be 100% consistent at it. Like, I've practiced it thousands of times at least. But first we have some easier skips. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hit jump on here, that's a little skip. And normally it's an elevator, but I can just go down the hole and that skips the elevator. Now here we have the lava room, and this is where the stupid skip comes into play. This room is normally very long, and very annoying. There's a funny little glitch there where you can hit the guy into the corner, and you pretty much get infinite meter. So here comes the skip. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and hit the checkpoint. So I'm going to do a thingy jump. I messed up. Which... You know, that isn't uncommon. Even the world record of this game, I missed that skip twice. So this is one of the hardest skips in the run. There are a few ways you can do it, but all of them are very hard. And not super consistent. So this room normally takes forever, but this skip saves about two minutes. Okay, I got it second try. That's decent enough. Yeah, that skip saves about two minutes, but it's pretty much a skip where you get one shot, and if you miss it, 
that's a big time loss. It's about 30 seconds or so if you lose it. I think a bit more. You can afford to miss it a few times and still save time over the casual route. But even still, it is a brutal skip. It's just not that consistent. And I'm going to do another little skip here. I'm going to do an air roll. Go around this corner. That skip's going around this whole area. Saves a bunch of time. It's risk. That skip is risky. It's a big time loss if you mess it up. But it's also not too hard either. So I don't mind going for it. And there's an extra morse with skips. Normally you have to go around this whole room. But I can just jump up here like that. I can just jump onto the edge of that platform. And I've skipped going around. Okay, that was very awkward because of the camera angle. That area has an annoying camera angle. But yeah, this next room also is a little skip. So normally you have to go all the way around. You have to go to the front of that room. Then you have to turn right and go through the, that area. But we can just skip that with a few jumps. I'm going to jump up here. And I'm going to air roll. And I made it straight to that switch. So that saves a bunch of time. So there's a laser wall here. Ah! Oh, that laser wall is normally not in that position. So that threw me off. I probably should have just waited for it. So yeah, I do, I, I do have to do this room again. It's not the end of the world. Again, I can just jump through. I'm going to do a little air roll here because it's swag and not hard at all. Normally you'd hit go on the grapple hook, which you can still do. I don't know if the air roll or the grapple hook is faster. But I just like doing the, the air roll because it's unintentional it looks cool. So we have this last room. This last room is the easiest in the level. Maybe except for the first room. Oh, I noticed the stream lagged a whole bunch. There is a little skip we can do in this room, but it's not a massive skip. So I'm going to hit the switch, and then that door will open. Well, it won't open, but... It'll let me hit the switch next to the door. That'll let the door open. So I'm going to do a little skip here. So normally I have to go around, but I can just do that to get around. That's also a relatively easy skip, but it, it is also very punishing if you miss it. Saves like 10 seconds or so, but loses a minute or so. But it is an easy skip, so at the very least there's that going for it. <laughs> Unlike some other skips. Alright, we're coming up to Rocket Silo. This is by far the longest level in the game. As a casual, this level is monumentally long. Like, with the casual route, <laughs> I think even as a speedrunner, it would take over 15 minutes. But we do have, but as speedrunners, we do have skips. Which do make this level less long, but it is still by far the longest level in the game. Like, even when done optimally, this level still takes like 8 minutes. So this beginning section is simple. Just gotta destroy those things. Unfortunately, you cannot skip the laser walls. There are invisible walls stopping you from doing that. So this room has a sk some skips. I'm gonna do... I'm gonna jump on here to get up here quickly. That's pretty simple. And it saves a bit of time. And now here we have a skip which is not so easy, and I'm not always consistent at. So here I'm going to grab, get, grab onto the grapple hooks, or I'm not going to do that, <laughs> I normally do miss that. And I'm going to slow climb up the thingy, I'm going to wait, because I really don't want to miss this. 
Okay, I got it second try. <laughs> That's alright, at least. I'm going to get hit there, and you are going to see why in just a little bit. So this next room has another skip. So normally, you have to fight another one of those stupid tanks. And that takes a long time. But we can skip it. Not only can we skip it, but we can genuinely skip it very easily. This is another one of the few easy skips in the game. We can jump on here, we can jump up here, we can hit the checkpoint trigger, and then we can death abuse. And that's why I took damage on the lasers earlier, because the lasers do a bit more damage than the fire. And then we can proceed to the next area. That saves probably two minutes, and it's super easy. So it's definitely a nice skip. It's a nice relaxing skip after the annoying slope climb. This next room, there is a very big skip in this next room. So normally you'd have to get down a platform and go in a room. But I'm going to go in here. I said I'm going to go in here. And then I'm going to jump up here. Wow. <laughs> I do not normally miss that. I am missing the silliest things right now. <laughs> this is not hard. This is not hard. <laughs> okay, to be fair, that was not my fault. The enemies were just being stupid. I'm making this skip look a lot harder than it actually is. So you can jump on here. Normally you have to go in that room and you have to fight not one, but two tanks. But we don't have to do that in a run. We can just jump straight to the next area. <laughs> And that saves a gazillion years. <laughs> that is an absolutely monumental skip. And while the first bit is hard, that second bit where you actually skip the room, that is incredibly easy. It's nice and easy, and it saves a ton, 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 ton of time. So this next room, this is the turret room. We've got another turret. Hooray. We love turrets. Because it's an early 2000s 3D platformer, of course there are turrets. So we have this fairly lengthy turret section where we have to kill a whole bunch of enemies. There are loads of enemies shooting at you, but you have a ton of health. This isn't particularly hard, it's just scary. Like, I shouldn't die in this room. Like, I really should not die in this room. But it can happen. But, I've died in this room very few times. So it definitely should not happen, but you never know. You never know. You, I, you, you need to kill these guys on the floor to progress. The other guys are kind of op are basically optional, but you should still get them anyway because they're just very annoying when you're fighting the tank. So now we have to fight another tank. There are four tanks in this level, and unfortunately we do have to fight this last one. There is technically a way to skip this tank, but it's Taz only. You can skip this entire room. Saves a lot of time, but it is Taz only, and it is an absolutely ridiculous strat. <laughs> Which, I don't even know how it fully works. They have to do an absolutely ridiculous out of bounds, where one mistake will cost you a bazillion years. Way more time than you would be saving if you actually got the skip. So, <laughs> yeah. It's not viable at all. And it's just extremely difficult in general. <laughs> I don't even know how it works. There's one part that skipped this room which I just have no idea how it works. The person who found it just hasn't revealed how it works. It's just really unfortunate. But I mean, even if we knew it, <laughs> It would never happen in an RTA run, never. You have to go over out bounds areas where if you fall down, you have to restart the whole level. You also have to go over the top of the level where you can very easily fall back in the level. And if that happens, you lose 
three minutes. And it's just... It's just crazy. So we've taken this tank down. So we're coming into the final room in the level. Or in the game. Well, in the level. There's one more level after this. I think there are enemies still alive so they could shoot me in this... Yep! I thought that would happen. So we have the final room in this level. This room is scary. Not particularly hard, but it's scary. You have to turn these... ...devices and then you have to press some switches while you're on a big crane. Well, you can't really do much. And all we can really hope for is that you don't get shot. Like, it's not a big deal if I get shot here. But this does scare me, because I'm fairly sure if you don't turn these quickly enough... ...you have to do them again. I've never had that happen to me in a run, but... <laughs> ...today could be the exception. There's a first time for everything in speedrunning. Yeah, I did not mess that up. So now all I really have to do is just hope I don't get hit. Yeah, that was really odd. Now, normally it goes up way sooner. See, so yeah, that was just extremely strange. I lost like half a minute due to that. That is not supposed to happen. This is definitely scary. Oh, I did the wrong thing. That was my that was my fault. Oh, that was entirely my fault. I don't know if I can get back on this. No, I, I couldn't. I'm choking the run. This, I think this was still sub one pace, but sub one's not happening anymore. This run, nor this this room normally does not go this badly for me in runs. Normally it goes pretty well. Oh, I was hoping that slope climb would work. It just what the swinging just wasn't how it normally is. If I die in this room, I will... I'm getting the health after this. I am getting the health. I had to slow climb up there. Normally I don't have to worry about that. Normally that doesn't have to happen, but it did this run. Because this room just went terribly. That can sometimes happen. There's nothing you can do about it. It just you just have to hope it doesn't happen. So that level's finally done. That that room just went horrifically bad. I think this room was still sub one pace before that room, but alas. I lost more than two and a half minutes on that level, so that's fun. So here we have the final boss, Omnidroid 3. And luckily this Omnidroid is nowhere near as bad as the first two. It's annoying as a speedrunner because there's RNG. Sometimes there's the Omnidroid just aimbots you and there's nothing you can really do about it. 
And there are strats you can do in this level, but they don't always work. Because there are just silly things that can happen in this fight. That's just very annoying. So I'm going to do a little strat here. So normally, what you're going to see here is that the Omnidroid has to do two of those claw attacks to hit you. But if you stand far back like I'm doing right now, the eye will come out immediately and you can hit him earlier. So that saves a little bit of time. And now I just need to go to the other side. I have to pick up the leg again. Not really much to say about to say here. I just need to hope I don't get hit. Which is easier said than done. You can try and move around to not get hit. Okay, there I just missed my roll jump. I could have very easily missed that if I didn't, you know, choke my execution. So I'm just gonna pick up the leg. And then we're gonna have another phase. So this, this is going to be basically the same as the second phase where you have to throw rocks into the eye, but the strat I have here is a little bit different. Because the strat you do in phase two, even though there is a similar strat in this phase, it just isn't viable. I need rocks. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to go under him so he, I missed it, I'm going to go under him so he does that, you know, little sign, he tries to attack me. Normally he does four claw attacks, but you can reduce it to one by going under him. Oh, where are the rocks? This is not a great phase four. We're coming very close to the end of the run after this, there's just one more bit. And then it'll be time. I'll say when time is time for time. I'm going to wait. I'm going to hit him. And we have one more cutscene. And then we have the final section. Where you have to control this very uncontrollable arm. But I'm going to use pause buffering. So I can control it more easily. And hit the eye. That was very favourable positioning. And that time. I believe that was a low 101, but I don't know exactly what the time is yet. That run was honestly not too bad. That was actually a pretty alright run for a marathon. <laughs> Some levels were terrible. Okay, that's a 10107, I believe. Some levels did go terribly. But that even happens in my world record run. I think... I'm not sure if I was still on world record pace going into Rocket Silo, but I was definitely close to it, seeing all the time I lost in these last two levels. These last two levels actually went really well on my PB. And I mean really well. Very close to the IL records. So yeah, this run, it had its ups and downs. But overall, not too bad for a marathon run. There's one more skip you can do in this game. If you unplug your controller during the credits, you can skip the credits. <laughs> it's useless in a full game run, but in an IL it saves a bazillion years. And it's <laughs> genuinely the easiest thing in the whole game. <laughs> so yeah, that was The Incredibles. As a speed game, this is honestly one of my favorite speed games. I've ran many games over the years, but this game is one of my favorites. There are definitely quite a few moments of downtime in the game. And it's definitely a difficult game. But honestly, it's just a, I just find it to be a really fun and rewarding game. It it's definitely has its flaws. But overall, I do find this game to be very fun to speedrun. <laughs> and I definitely did wish I had more competition at the top. But unfortunately, I do not. So yeah, that was The Incredibles Any Percent. <laughs> Truly an incredible run. And I'm done now.
But the next run will be myself, so if you want to see more of me...